Breakpoint, 15 countries, 12 finalists, one amazing vision. Empower Caribbean companies to take on export markets. Over 13 weeks, we meet more than 30 companies selected from over 15 Caribbean countries. We follow their journey, from their first coaching sessions at the University of the West Indies School of Business in Barbados, where they not only learn the fundamentals of business communication, but have all of their presentations individually reviewed and critiqued by business development educators. Amazing advice, unparalleled insight. Dedicated entrepreneurs vying to convince four judges to choose their company to be among the 12 finalists who travel to London to make their final pitch in front of angel investors, distributors and retailers that could change their future and move them forward. Last week on Breakpoint. What's the cost price? My unit price per product is $20. We're asking you cost price. My cost price is around $13. That sounds expensive to me. Our products are efficacious. They work. I am intrigued by your determination that what the market is waiting for in the UK is spicy rum. We're going for a niche approach. The regional judges viewed presentations from four budding entrepreneurs vying to win the chance to pitch to venture capitalists in London. Who will it be? The passionate owner of the online business to business network? The persuasive CEO of the cosmetics company for all skin tones? the lifestyle clothing brand with a strong social agenda, or the animation company looking to represent their Caribbean-ness. It was a tough choice, but the judges decided upon the travel and lifestyle TV company, Island Life Television. We've created a brand, Island Life, which depicts Caribbean lifestyle excellence. And we're bringing Island Life to the world. Breakpoint, a Caribbean export development agency initiative to assist innovative entrepreneurs to break into Europe. The EPN Breakpoint actually gives us the opportunity to bring our idea out on a global forum. We see it as very strategic and timely. To get into the European market. A regional competition showcasing Caribbean products and industry. My brand is Southside. We are a food manufacturing company. And a television documentary series. Woodsman Caribbean is good for every darn thing seasoning. Giving training and valuable expertise. Still, I'm not sure what she's selling. I think it's a very strong point that you have. I think you're going to make it successful. Creating a catalyst to take the Caribbean to the world. Knowledge we're trying to impart, something that can be beneficial to all. We emphasize on quality. Unique products that will make significant impact on the international market. Here are the judges for Breakpoint. Six of the most enterprising and successful businessmen and women in the Caribbean. Today, they're about to make or break the dreams of these budding entrepreneurs. These leading business people bring years of experience to the table. Preeminent business leader Dr. Basil Springer was a consultant to the Caribbean Development Bank and established the Caribbean Business Enterprise Trust, Inc. Awarded the Barbados Gold Crown of Merit in 2000, Dr. Springer is also a motivational speaker and provides workshops on his management of business matrix. I've had a lot of experience over the last 12 years in enterprise development. So when I was asked by the Caribbean Export to participate as a judge in this very interesting exercise, I could not refuse. Joseph Mathalon has a wealth of experience in the business world. As the owner and principal of Jamaica management consultancy firm CSL Projects, he is an expert in restructuring businesses to improve logistics and efficiency. I found it was very, very interesting, a very useful program. It gave me an opportunity to mentor some of the young um, upcoming um, entities in, in the region. Genevieve Jodhan is the Executive Manager of Export and Business Development at one of the world's leading manufacturers of rum and bitters, Angostura Limited. She is currently the only female logistician in the Caribbean. I agreed to be a judge at Breakpoint because of my experience in trading with the EU markets and having first-hand knowledge of how difficult it is to actually stay in the market once you enter. Alan Brzezinski is Managing Director of preeminent Grenadian retailer Jonas Brown & Hubbard. Well versed to advise our candidates, he is a past president of the Grenada Chamber of Industry and Commerce. I am always very impressed to see Caribbean people who have the entrepreneurial spirit. CEO of leading advertising agency Freestyle Inc., Kenny Green's diverse portfolio also includes co-founder and director of mobile content provider Pix and Phones and director of Nature Isle Realty. I felt that it was an excellent opportunity to give to lend some of my experience to the program and also to get an understanding of what is going on around the region in terms of people building capacity to be able to go into other markets. 
Notable investment and securities dealer Christopher Williams is the co-founder and CEO of Proven Investments Limited, a multi-million dollar investment company. He was also deputy chairman of the Jamaica Stock Exchange. I chose to be a judge in Breakpoint because of the opportunity that it presents, not just for a region, but for the individual entrepreneurs to develop. And I think that what we're trying to do here is really build a generation of entrepreneurs that will last way beyond our lifetime. And so my ability to participate in that process is something that you just can't say no to. Together, they will decide who will go forward. Will any of today's hopeful entrepreneurs win the opportunity to pitch in London? Let's now take a look at the criteria for Breakpoint. The candidate must show a clear opportunity for the product in the market. The firm must demonstrate a competitive level of product innovation. There must be a compelling position on which to build the brand. The product must be in a position to benefit from the advantages of the EPA. The firm must be able to show market readiness for entry in less than six months and the candidate must be able to show industry knowledge and possess management and leadership experience. The first step for the budding entrepreneurs was to submit a video pitch to Breakpoint. The successful firms then participated in a preparatory session at Cave Hill School of Business in Barbados. FaceTime with top mentors who analyzed their business model and advised them on preparing their pitch. We begin in Jamaica with an agro-processing company that has already enjoyed export success. Southside Distributors boasts a range of 15 products for distribution, as company founder Denise Palmer explains. We are an agro-processing company. We manufacture and distribute canned vegetables such as ackees, canned cadaloo, jerk seasoning, jerk sauce, uh, mango nectar, juices, um, other sauces, and we are growing. We are a growing company. We export to Canada, UK, and we are currently working our, on our HACCP program so we can be FSME certified for the US market. With its 60% export earning base, Southside is now a major player in the community employing 40 persons and purchasing produce from scores of local farmers. Southside Distributors Limited won the 2010 National Commercial Bank Nation Builders Women in Business for Region 2 in Jamaica. This was made possible by a strong female leader with a committed staff, valuable customers and suppliers. Southside builds a trusted brand of wide appeal which is available in leading hotels, select supermarkets, restaurants and schools. Award-winning St. Lucian company Viking Traders has been operating for over 30 years. Managing director Nicholas Zeffrin is not only confident in the quality of his products but also in their uniqueness. We are very innovative in the products that we manufacture. I believe you probably have not heard of a banana barbecue sauce. We believe this is the only one that is on the market today. So we think there's great opportunity for our company to be part of the Breakpoint uh, competition. We're an agro-processing company. We currently supply the local market, but more and more we are exporting our products overseas. There are many factors that make our products unique. For example, our coconut cream is rich and creamy and smooth and we've compared it to all the other coconut creams and it stands out in the market. I've been using Viking products for so long and I think they're great. Viking Traders, let's go together. It's damn hot! Factoid about the Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA. Aid for Trade is also provided under the European Development Fund country programs, programs promoting ACP integration and the economic adaptation measures under the EU's sugar and banana programs. There are two more leading Caribbean companies to meet when we return on Breakpoint. We return to Southside Distributors. Heading into her coaching session, Executive Director Denise Palmer reflected on the impact of Breakpoint for her business. It has presented itself opportunities for us to export more to the UK, to get into the European market, and also has provided a lot of exposure. Our, our objective is to increase revenue by 30% within the next two years through export. 
increase export sales. We have been exporting already to Canada and the UK. A little to US, I must say, because I sent a container just last week. A container of Cal Can Cal 1,250 cases to be exact to the, to the US. Our strategy is to establish a four formal distribution relationships within two years in the UK, Germany, and France. We are going to piggy bank on the Jamaica, brand Jamaica, and you know Jamaica sells, no doubt about that, as well as Southside Story. Southside Distributors started almost six years ago in a little shop, a little rental shop with Pots and Stove, and we managed to have outgrown that. Today we host our own location from one employee up to 42 when we were in high peak season. Denise certainly knew her business, but coach Dr. Janine Coma was concerned with her confidence and presentation style. That is your opportunity, please, to shine, all right? When I said to you, are you ready? You said, guess so. I think so, yes. Should I have said yes? No. Yes now, or oh, oh, yes, yes Janine, you are planting your confidence. But the yes, the guess so is, okay, I am not too sure it comes across fairly yes. insecure. Right. You are emphasizing that you are a Jamaican in terms of the product. But the, and you have said the Jamaican brand. The Jamaican brand also has a personality, mm -hmm. which is, which, uh, let me be mm -hmm. quite frank, tends to be a more confident mm -hmm. and a, an aggressive type personality in a positive way. You want to get into France and Germany especially. Um, what provisions, how do you intend to get into that market first of all? And then because of the language barrier, um, how do you intend to deal with that? We are prepared to, to do our labels to, to um, facilitate the language barrier. For example, we sent to Canada, we have to have English and French right. on the labels. So that is just for Canada, so we, so we continue in terms of if we're, wherever the market is, we will try to facilitate that. Going into the coaching session, I felt more confident, a little jittery, but more confident than I, when I came earlier. Meanwhile, at Viking Traders, as Managing Director Nicholas Zeffrin was going into his coaching session, he reflected on the timeliness of the Breakpoint initiative for his company. We see it as very strategic and timely because at this point in time, we're looking to expand our manufacturing operations. And we think getting access to uh, larger markets outside the Caribbean region, especially in Europe, would be a tremendous benefit to our company. The rum cake is really, really unique. Yes, our competition, there's a lot of competition now we notice on the market for rum cake. And what makes ours different is the moist flavor of the cake. It is a very healthy product. It has no flavors no preservatives, no artificial colors. What we are uh, hoping to achieve from the break point is to see that we have such a tremendous opportunity in our business with really excellent products and really position the company for future success. Although he was clearly nervous, Nicholas had delivered a convincing presentation and business coach Ayanna Young Marshall offered some good advice to take his presentation to the next level. When you are considering entering a new market, the first thing, the most important thing that you are going to establish is that there is a demand for your product. You want to drive it home by saying, this is how many people want to have our amazing products. Right. This is our capacity to produce this for them, and here's why this, as a result, you must invest in us. That hasn't been brought out at all. There were a few mistakes that you made. For example, you said that your rum cake has no flavor. <laughs> I think you meant to he say- said, He said no, no, no flavors. No but flavors. I guess your point. No yeah. Right? You meant to say no you artificial say, flavors. Yeah. But and you nerves. meant no artificial flavoring. You tended to explain some points that perhaps you didn't need to spend so much time on explaining, particularly as it came closer to the end. 
uh, it's nice that we understand the management team, but you didn't need to spend so much time explaining the different. Like, <laughs> I wasn't losing interest. I was really thinking to myself, does he have any idea how much time is gone? Yeah. He doesn't have time to go into no, that detail. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was really thinking. Yeah. Yes, the coaching session went very well. Uh, in the process, we learned uh, some additional tips on methods of presenting our uh, company and some new approaches so that we could further improve. Eco-friendly St. Lucian company Kainu Limited has two facets, furniture design and manufacture and an environmentally aware television documentary. Kainu also enjoys synergies with Scandinavia, as company owner Kathy Walker explains. Kainu is actually an interior design company. Uh, we sell furniture imported out of Europe. Um, we work with a lot of hotels and restaurants, mainly hotels and restaurants. Uh, we also do export our services to Europe. Right now I work as a consultant with one of the largest interior design firms out of Europe. What we are trying to do with Kainu Limited is to introduce this program called I'm Not Rubbish and the program will be based on a television documentary series. What we're trying to do is to get people to recognize the amount of waste we have in the Caribbean and how we can upcycle that waste and create interesting and innovative products. The demand for our services at present within the Caribbean is fairly moderate but within Scandinavia which we also have a market in, it's fairly high. We service both the Caribbean and the Scandinavian market. I have produced and hosted a number of television programs in the past, including Tropical Lifestyles, which was also shown in Barbados on CBC. The product we would like to present is a program called I'm Not Rubbish. It's going to be a documentary series and it's going to focus on upcycling and showing people how they can create interesting, innovative, fresh, user-friendly products by using what we would normally consider to be rubbish. Let's see who's poised for success at the regional pitches next on Breakpoint. We now move to Trinidad and Tobago to a family owned agro processing company. Woodsman Caribbean Limited produces Caribbean inspired condiments and food products, as Vassal Stewart explains. This is a family owned company. We were established in November of 2006, and our aim is to present the world with two new products, a sauce and a seasoning. Our product is Caribbean cooking and table sauce called Caribbean Good for Every Damn Thing Sauce. Our current demand is 12 tons per annum, and we project, based on our marketing plan, a minimum annual increase of 50%. To prove that we will be able to demonstrate market readiness in less than six months, our company has the appropriate infrastructure and machinery to meet international food safety standards. Presently, we service the institutional markets such as restaurants and fast food outlets and retail establishments. We return to the eco-friendly furniture design Kainu Limited, where Kathy Walker was feeling confident heading into her coaching session. Well, we tried to produce a slideshow in a format that we think it's informative, it's effective. We try to not use too much wording, but rather pictures to tell the story of what we're trying to come across with. Kainu Limited is actually an interior design company, and we produce furniture, our own designs, on a very small scale. Interior design industry is a huge industry globally right now. Um, it is also one of the largest contributors to the CO2 level in the environment, unfortunately. You find that a lot of the furniture being produced now and a lot of the equipment we use are not being built to last. While Kathy was passionate about the environmental issues surrounding her company goals, coach Marjorie Wharton felt she needed to nail down her sales pitch. It didn't focus on what you really want to get, which is you're looking, seeking to be able to, do, to get funding to be able to develop the international television documentary series. You are starting a movement. I'm starting yeah, a movement. You are starting a movement. And I, that hasn't necessarily been driven home. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think it, the point I'd made originally about the cost of garbage, the cost mm -hmm. of rubbish, you have to, if you're going to shock <coughs> at the beginning in terms of the sort of information that you provided, shock with that. It gave me some great ideas on how to improve my skills in the presentation. So yeah, I, th I found it was very, very good. Back to Woodsman Caribbean Limited. 
Chairman and major shareholder Vassal Stewart was hoping to utilize the Breakpoint initiative to increase exposure for his products. Breakpoint event gives us the opportunity to get buyers to evaluate the product. We believe that once that is done, we are well on our way to be, in our view, among the six top um, seasoning and sauces in the international market. We are looking for strong, committed international buyers who could take the product international. So we are saying to the world that we have a seasoning that is as exciting as our world-class athletes, as exciting as our music, as exciting as our rums. We are ready. We are looking for the distributors. And that is why we believe that for this breakpoint competition, that we will be one of the winners. We think that we could make a tremendous difference to the Caribbean and to Caribbean economies by sourcing these spices from around the region, from Jamaica, from Trinidad and Tobago, from Grenada, from Dominica, just for starters. It was a strong presentation, but business coach Ryan Nurse had some concerns about the slides. Sometimes, if the print is a little fine, I may have to get a little closer. Squint my eyes, try to see what's there, and then I may miss what you're saying, some point you're making. So have less writing on the screen and make it bigger so you can sit back and say, oh, really, that's it, you know? Do you have something focused? Test the market, and then you can go on from here. I would need to see, if I'm following your presentation, that you're different from all the others based on these factors or, or these areas. I think that's, that's something that you really need to, to sell. Yeah, my coaching session went very well. I think from the response from the coaches, um, they were quite satisfied with the quality of the presentation and with the range of information. With all the training completed, the candidates moved forward with their new skills to the regional pitches, which took place in three countries, Barbados, St. Lucia and Jamaica. We first head to the regional pitches in Jamaica with the agro-processing manufacturer and exporter, Southside Distributors. Company founder Denise Palmer had a shaky start to her coaching session, but had since done a lot of work and was hoping all her preparation would pay off. I did some rehearsal, I did some research, really, and, and I adjust my presentation. As, as, it go, as I review, I adjust. So I did quite a bit of, I put a lot of presentation into it, a lot of preparation into it. At Southside Distributors, we do agro-processing and a whole range of products, 14 products to be exact. We have two magics. One, our business model, which really boasts our relationship for traceability, quality. We're from the Bread Basket Parish in St. Elizabeth. Therefore, we are able to garner fresh fruit and vegetables. We do have competition, no doubt about that. We are among some big giants, for example, Grace, other large factories in, as it relates to spices, kanakis, export products, and local products. However, we are not afraid of competition because the product speaks for itself. Six years ago, when we just started, we had, it was just word of mouth advertisement. We couldn't afford anything else. But because the products speak for itself, we were able to get into the supermarkets, we're able to get into the household kitchens, and that has give, given us the foundation to go to where we are today. Denise was delivering well, but Jamaican judge Joseph Matlon had concerns about her breaking into Europe. The Europe European market, is very, particularly the German market, is extremely rigid on foodstuffs going into that marketplace. Mm -hmm. And are you fully au fait with the various um, forms of health protections, etc. Um, and secondly, are you certified currently to export Aki into the United States of America? No, we are not certified to export Aki's in particular because we have to be HACCP certified to do so. We are quite it's aware. To we are quite aware of the FSMA, which has come into uh, to, to play into being last year by President Obama, which is the Food Safety Modernization Act, with a little, which is a little bit further from the HACCP, because that's from the is that traceability from the farm to the fork, and not necessarily normal in the days we in HACCP you really 
document and relate to just receival to the to the traceability to the distributor. Now you're talking about farm, and that is where it, it, we we have an advantage in terms of the farmers. We're right there, so we can visit the farm, look at the facility and the condition that which on which they produce, and look at the records, highlight those to them, and give them some mentoring. Is there anything in terms of the way your product is produced, either in the process or in the ingredients, that set you apart? I don't think there is anything else except for the brand the, I just mentioned and the ingredients which is unique because you'd never find, and I guarantee, you'd never find a jerk seasoning that has all the ingredients that's outside. Here's a little bit more about the Economic Partnership Agreement. The EPA opens doors for normalization of bilateral trade with Haiti, enabling relations between Haiti and the Dominican Republic to have greater certainty and reliability. See how the candidates perform at the regional pitches when we return on Breakpoint. We return to Viking Traders, where Nicholas had delivered a convincing, if a little hesitant, presentation and had garnered some excellent advice to prepare for his regional pitch. We have done several days and weeks of preparation, so we think we are ready and we want to give a good performance for Viking. Good afternoon, mm. panel of judges. We'll begin today uh, introducing our company Viking, which is an agro-processing firm located in the beautiful island of St. Lucia. The concept is that we are producing fresh from the farm to your table. So we are linked with farmers in the banana industry, in the coconut industry, and in the hot pepper industry. So our main product lines uh, in 2013, October 2013, we can see that the pepper sauce is at 3 million EC followed by our coconut cream, and then we have our rum cake. But please don't underestimate this little red or brown bar you see here. This is our banana barbecue sauce, the only one of its kind on the market in the world. Here we're showing our profit and loss figures, and between the 2013 to 2017, our sales figures jump from 4 million to 17 million uh, as we enter into the UK market. And this is actual projections based on QuickBooks, uh, based on prior year data. And we can see a net profit value of 3.5 million in 2017. So how are we going to meet that demand? We're going to be producing products which are healthy, fresh, and we know there are so many products on the market that are competing. So we want to produce flavored variants. For example, the mango pepper sauce, the banana pepper sauce, the garlic pepper sauce, and some other variants, which we know these are becoming quite popular in the UK market. Our factory currently operates at 40% capacity. So we are pretty confident that we can meet that demand within the six to eight months period. But because of the sheer volume of the market that it exists, we realize that there will also be a need for an expansion of the factory and to automate the production process. So Nicholas was representing well, but Dominique and judge Kenneth Green had some concerns about the high levels of competition. This is a very, very highly occupied space. Um, all throughout the region, there are people who have damn hot pepper sauces, not your brand obviously, but condiments. It's a very highly occupied space. What will allow you to keep the USP because obviously there is a unique selling point to some of your products but what will allow you to keep it especially in a space where in the Caribbean all most of the islands have the same ingredients. Yes. What, the way we uh, want to move forward is the, by focusing on quality and that is the only way that we have achieved the success that we have achieved to, to this day by focusing on quality and aiming to really produce something that is original and that has been the hallmark of the products and, and the way over the 33 years that Viking has developed. So we intend to continue that tradition and produce products that will win the international awards when we're in trade shows 
you know, will, will be the, the eye catcher, will really stand out, will really, you know, be really in the interest of people that love and that appreciate Caribbean products. Meanwhile, at Southside Distributors, Denise had faced some challenging questions from the judges and was moving forward with her pitch. Our marketing objective is to increase sales by 30% within the next two years. And how are we going to do that? We are going, we are going to establish con formal relationship with distributor distributors in the UK, Germany and France. We are going to take advantage of the brand Jamaica. We are on a strong road path and therefore we should be able to meet all our demands and top into not only looking distributors as it relates to distributing our products, but also Ghana investors and we're willing to to really willing to give up twenty percent of our share. That we're looking at at a hundred thousand euro and we are looking at after tax about seven to ten percent as it relates to that investment. At Southside Distributors, taste and quality is just as good. That's our tagline. Southside Distributors was a strong brand, but Jamaican judge Joseph Matlon pointed out the irony of having the same company name. Having worked most of my life in Southside, why did you pick that as a name for a product in Jamaica? <laughs> Southside in Kingston? Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, the association so, for a... Okay, well, um, Southside, well, Southside speaks to St. Elizabeth, and you would have imagined, not Southside in Kingston, I have never been there, I don't even know Southside in Kingston, but Southside in um, St. Elizabeth, it refers to South, being on the South Side. Of the island of Jamaica. Of, of, the, of the island. Of it might be interesting to mm -hmm. add Jamaica. Southside Jamaica. Southside Jamaica. Not, okay. not only for political reasons, but okay. to, to participate in brand Jamaica. Okay. As well, a that is something that yeah, I look into. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. that, that sounds like something that I really look into because I was looking at, in recent times, um, Southside. Some people believe that we are just distributors. In terms of Germany, um, why Germany? Well, we have done our research and we have seen the the demand. I was just mm -hmm. wondering in terms of, because um, you mentioned Brand Jamaica and the South Side Story. Yes. So in terms of the research is on the generic right. ethnic foods. Ethnic foods. Caribbean the foods. Market, Caribbean foods in, and Jamaica in particular. Jamaican food in particular. We have a competitive, competitive advantage as it relates to, to, to um, the demand. My experience with the judges was very good. I was relaxed. I did my presentation and they, were, they had some very good questions. Not only that, they gave me some suggestions which I will really look at and implement. Back at eco-friendly furniture design Kainu Limited, Kathy had gained a lot from the coach's advice in her coaching session. However, she was not able to present for the regional pitch and instead delivered it via video conferencing from Sweden. Today we are here to present you our concept of Animal Rubbish, a television documentary series that will be exploring the world of rubbish from a design perspective. I'm actually presenting this, this idea to you today from Sweden, where I'm sitting working as an interior design consultant. Our idea for the television program is to assist in decreasing the amount of rubbish being produced in the world or what we consider to be rubbish. For marketing, we intend to use everything we can within our the website, social media, and general advertising. First program, we have estimated six months. After the first program, which is always the most difficult one to do, we are hoping to reduce our production time significantly and complete producing analog rubbish on a flat basis and predict a lot more programs than one. Our summary call to action. What did we are looking for? We are looking for 145,000 US investors in producing our program and build our company. We are looking to raise funding to allow us to do so. We want to create a television documentary series that has cross-border appeal. Through this, we can assist in developing creative ideas that will generate new industry and business within the Caribbean. I believe this is very important. We cannot avoid doing things the same way in the Caribbean. We have to generate new ideas, new industry, and encourage the to create what needs 
of generating revenue. Although it was difficult presenting over a video link, Kathy had done well, and Dominique and Judge Kenneth Green wanted to know more. Do you have a partner, even from a point of view of a, a production partner in the UK or in Europe, given that the remit of this, this program is initially within Europe? Yes, I do. The internet for Target company has been building our web platforms and our website. They're actually based on and they work with some of the largest educational-based publishers in Europe. Mm -hmm. So they are Swedish and they're also going to be using a camera crew out of Sweden to do some of our external filming when we're not in the Caribbean filming. It seems to me that you are seeking financing for a film, for a program, and not seeking the development of an industry, per se. Um, I'm not sure what level of continuity would continue for either St. Lucia or the region following on the production of that film. And I think what Breakpoint is seeking to achieve is to mature industries uh, by creating significant linkages between Caribbean countries and the European Union. How would you, how would you defend your position in that regard? The program is not going to be a one-off program. There are thousands of examples of upcycled products out there. If you just go on the World Wide Web and you Google Upcycle, you will see a number of companies creating industry, employment, and revenue from the upcycled concept. Find out next who can stay focused under pressure when we return on Breakpoint. Agro-processing manufacturer Vassal Stewart from Woodsman Caribbean Limited had a positive learning experience at his training session and was fully prepared to deliver in his regional pitch. I feel very confident. I think we are well prepared. I think the products we have are indeed world-class products. The challenge we have, of course, is to convince the judges. This is a family-owned company. We started all the way back in the 90s, basically involved in the restaurant trade. Um, in 2010, we had a family get-together in Orlando. And I'm from a family um, that is Trinidadians and Jamaicans. As you may well imagine, in those settings, there's always pecong and old talk. So we had ended up with a situation where there was a competition between the Jamaica side and the Trinidadian side looking at the two things. One, a competition with curry and another with barbecue. We happened to have had some American friends there and so they became the judges. Coming out of that event, we, the Jamaican curry won five to three, there were eight judges. And in the case of the barbecue, there was a tie. There was a discussion after which led to the issue of formulating a barbecue product that would be a combination of the Trinidad spices and the Jamaican spices. And we think that that is what have brought us to where we are today. Our mission is to make Woodsman Caribbean good for every darn thing seasoning and sauce. And that's the name we have chosen to use because the product is that versatile. But to go in the international market, we are not seeking to be an individual branded product. We are going to go after the bulk market, international distributors, or repackers of seasoning and sauces. And from the other part of the business, the, the supply side will contract farmers in the region to produce the quality products that we require and provide them with the technical support to ensure the quality is there, particularly from a safety perspective. Because we are focused on bulk production, we have already identified machine and equipment out of China that would allow us to increase our capacity from where it is now. Um, right now we are just able to do about half a container a week. The, the, the projection is for us to go up to 10 containers per month. I've already spoken to, as I said, the largest food distributor in Trinidad that is already committed to distributing product on our, our behalf. We are looking for large international buyers that have the capacity, the experience, the resources to take our product international. You're vegetarian. I do have some mushrooms, but I actually didn't think they would take it with me. So I'm afraid you could only have the aroma. You can figure the trinity part of that. A little. I'm afraid there are no Bajan components just yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could <smell> it. <laughs> okay. So I just want to iterate the, the, the essential fact. We have the product. We have the quality product. We have the systems in place. 
What we are looking for is the marketing capacity that we lack to take this product international. After a strong presentation and all but one judge fed, Barbadian judge Dr. Basil Springer questioned Woodsman's ability for market penetration. If I were this large potential this distributor and you bring this product to me, I already have plenty of guys that are distributing their product. All right. How are you going to penetrate into that mix? When we developed this product initially, we were looking basically at a product for barbecue. And then we realized people were using the thing for everything. They were using it for, for curry. In fact, I, I had a call on a weekend from somebody who was going to do what they call in Trinidad a river lime with duck. And he said, hey man, I need to get some seasoning to do curry. And I said, but the seasoning with bass is not for curry. It's for, it's for, it's for barbecue. He said, no, the thing good for everything. I put it even in my room. When I have in a room, and then we realized, hold on, we have the product positioned wrongly. So it's, it's the versatility of the product, even the sauce. Right? That gives us that, the, the opportunity. It's good for every darn thing darn that you've got to get in front of their face. Exactly. Exactly. Like the somebody might say no salt, no sugar, no MSG. You're saying good for every darn every thing. Every darn thing. E even your health. I feel quite satisfied that the presentation went well. If I'm to judge from the judge's response, which was, I think, very positive. I think I made a presentation in the time that was allotted. I think I, were, I was able to convey the things I thought were important. Um, most importantly, I was able to have a demonstration of a product. We now return to Viking Traders, where Managing Director Nicholas Zeffrin was representing well. Viking has based its whole production and philosophy on producing quality. We produce up to a quality. And we have won several international awards as recent as April, just a month before. The company received a Platinum Award from Business Initiative Directions, BID, uh, which we picked up in Frankfurt, Germany. In 1997, we came first, our pepper sauce, the Dam Hot Pepper Sauce, mm -hmm. out of 275 pepper sauces competing in the Americas, the very first time Viking ever went to compete, we came first. Viking, on the whole, is committed to developing and achieving our goal of producing the finest Caribbean products with the natural Caribbean flavors and to becoming as traditional and convenient as the market requires, as the Caribbean market is known to be. So the whole aim here is to ask for uh, $4.2 million uh, in investment in our company and we believe that this uh, uh, will be very valuable in taking the company to the next level and it has tremendous prospects, tremendous prospects because we are seeing this demand already in the local market and we know that out there now the market is incredible. We have to be responding every week to, to emails so we're, we're very very happy and very um, excited of what the future holds for Viking and we would welcome investment uh, in our company. So the products, as I said, are so unique, uh, made so special. And, you know, this is, our, this is what we would really be expecting. Thank you. Can we get them to taste samples? Sure. Yes, this is uh, our banana ketchup, our banana barbecue sauce, and our damn hot rice sauce. Damn hot. Hey, damn hot. Thank you. Thank you. After the presentation was completed and samples put to the test, Jamaican judge Joseph Matlon voiced his concerns about the company estimates of net worth. For 1.5 million, if that company decided to take equity, what percentage of the company are you prepared to give up for 1.2 million US dollars? 1.5 million US dollars. I think we can start at, at uh, we can say 10 percent. I see. So that you reckon that your business is worth 15 million US dollars? Is the net worth of your business? Well, I can say the net worth of our business uh, in 2017, I can see that our business will, will reach a tremendous uh, turn uh, in the sales figure in 2017. It would be 17 million. That's not a, the net worth per se. That's the sales figure. Um, but in terms of our, yes, I, I see that we can achieve uh, that easily. Because I hardly think you will find a taker. Okay. 
based on the numbers that you've shown us, that we'll pay 1.5 million, we'll pay, we'll consider that business worth 15 million US dollars. Okay. My presentation with a panel of judges went very well. They asked some, some difficult questions, which we answered as best we could. And we presented the statistics and the evidence of the market that's out there. So we feel pretty sure you know, that the data is very recent and that it's very positive for the product line that we manufacture. When the pitches were finished, the judges discussed the merits of each candidate. Woodsman. I, I liked how he, he's portraying the Caribbean, you know, with the Jamaica plus the Trinidad in it. Viking, Viking traders. There was a lot of um, what I call vibes and senses where you couldn't he couldn't quantify a lot of the, the projections that he was making. Kainu. I wasn't convinced that the product, that is a TV documentary, would succeed in effecting either a change in consumer behavior here in the Caribbean or encouraging entrepreneurial activity, which is supposed to be the objective of the series. Yeah. And I, I'm not convinced. I'm not either. Southside distributors. I, I like her because she is the type of person who in five years, six years time might pop up uh, on the radar again as uh, someone who has succeeded against the odds when other people did not think she would get through. Who is the budding entrepreneur that will go through to the next round? The agro-processing company that has already enjoyed export success? The emotive condiments producer who believes Breakpoint has come at the perfect time for his company? the dual-faceted designer and TV documentary producer looking to build on synergies with Scandinavia, or the passionate producer of the aptly named Good For Every Darn Thing Sauce. Find out next week who will be going through to London on Breakpoint. Here is the contact information for each of the firms represented in today's show. We wish all our firms every success with their business. Caribbean Airlines.